Okay, Mike here to do the uh, recap of the February 6th, aka my birthday, version of Warzone, AWAC Warzone. All right, all right, the night started off with a big moment with Vince Lucero and Damian Miller coming out to uh, have a little chat, shall we, shall we say, with uh, the fans. Uh, they both uh, came through. They both kind of announced that they were going to have a new teammate. Uh, Vince Lucero announced Tiger Shaw, former ECW uh, superstar, a bit of a lightweight, as a new member of his team. Uh, Tiger Shaw then cut a little promo about, you know, how uh, Damian Miller went behind the backs of the entire... Um, ECW roster, he's been offering NWFI guys a spot on his team, so it's time for, you know, the ECW guys to get a little revenge in that regard. Uh, he looked a little hurt by this, Damian Miller did. I uh, see a little crestfallen, and then he said, you know, there is loyalty in ECW, though. And he called out one of the former ECW champions, Rampage 2, to take his spot on the team. So, we now have three members on each team. Katz McCoy for Damian Miller, along with AC Earl and Rampage 2, Tiger Shaw. Montoya and Cyrus Creed for Team Lucero. After that, we had a little promo from the safety patrol, Jake Hansen and Miz, talking about the vertical limit division and how it's bad for wrestling, how it's not safe, how, you know, all this uh, bull that they've been spilling out about the lightweights, basically. They want to injure the heavyweights because they know they're not as good. CJ Carpenter came out. Uh, he's the champion, of course, of the vertical limit division, and the match was scheduled. Uh, Jake had apparently gotten a scheduled match with one of the general managers. Uh, the match was good. It went back and forth. I mean, Jake used a lot of good uh, mat wrestling, kind of downed his opponent for a lot of the match. Uh, but, you know, CJ's, CJ's a champion. He kept getting back up, kept coming back, kept uh, nailing some high pace offense. But eventually, they got to the point where. Um, Austin Blake came down uh, from the crowd and uh, he basically nailed CJ Carpenter into his security barrier and tossed him back in where Jake hit the old school finish, the Fisherman Suplex, bridged into a pin, got the three count, got the victory, uh, which is huge. Uh, then Austin Blake talked about how in the in the post match he grabbed the mic and told the, told CJ that, you know, Thanks to the persuasive tactics of the rest of Honey Inc., Caddy Roberts, and Karina Gold, that Austin Blake's going to be challenging for the vertical limit title at Regenesis this Saturday. The cameras next to went into the locker room of Prime America. We saw Dan Awesome cut a little promo about, you know, for weeks he's been very frustrated with, of course, uh, TJ Cool getting pinned in a lot of matches. And uh, basically he said, if we lose tonight, we're done. Um, there, there, there's no way around it. We're, we're not coming back as a tag team. You can carry on the Prime American name, but I'm going to hit the singles bandwagon. And There's nothing you can do to persuade me otherwise except we win tonight. And uh, then, of course, they went out to take on Weapons of Mass Destruction in a uh, number one contenders tag match. TJ looked good in this match. I mean, Prime America did generally. They controlled the match a little bit more, but then they, they got isolated. Dan got isolated by the Weapons of Mass Destruction in the corner. They just beat him down pretty mercilessly. He got the tag in. The problem is TJ came in, didn't really have any effect. Eventually what we ended up with is uh, TJ got Inferno Bomb by Dante Kane and pinned. So Weapons of Mass Destruction move on to Regenesis. Dan Awesome slapped TJ, left the ring, basically, you know, give him the old fuck you. Uh, next up, number one contenders for the female match was uh, Keaton Yorkroth versus Faith. These two blocked power right away. I mean, they're, they're both women who are not used to being able to pu being pushed around, and they just went at it this match, trying to establish power, but neither of them could. And eventually, Faith was the first one to realize that it wasn't going to be the power that won this match. It was going to be the brain, and she just basically rolled up. Katie Norcroft got the victory. She moves on. Uh, Katie Norcroft, though, after the match, completely destroyed her, hit her with the avalanche and then left the ring, the fans were booing her. Mariska came out with this mysterious person she's been talking to in the dark for a while, and they stared out at Fate Deadeye, and then Flames came out, and from the outside of the ring, Jumbotron and Message Regenesis, the Reign of Darkness will continue. So maybe we'll get more information on this guy that's kind of following her, at least it appears to be a man, and we'll see. Uh, Christopher Archangel and Mildred had yet another confrontation, but this match really didn't end up being much of a match because the Dark Ministry busted down to the ring and attacked and then the Fallen came out to try to even up the odds. Uh, eventually Vince Lucero uh, basically came out said, you want to rip each other apart so bad, how about a six-man tag at Regenesis, the Fallen versus the Dark Ministry and that's going to happen. 
then Vince went back to his office. Dan Awesome was there. Dan offered his services as the fourth member of Team Lucero. And of course, at this point, Vince is a little bit desperate. I mean, he went with Tiger Shaw as a third member. So he happily took Dan Awesome. Frosty Chillingsworth had requested time to do a promo, and he got it. Uh, he was talking about the spoiled life of Byron Jack, the part of the life we haven't seen, and the part of the life that he doesn't want us to see because it makes him look really, really bad. You know what I mean? Basically, he hinted that his client was abused by Byron Giant. And eventually, finally, it came out with it. Madman, the client of Frosty Chillingsworth, is actually the brother of Byron Giant, which kind of stunned the crowd. They came into a bit of silence almost. Uh, he said it's time for revenge. He's taking the Madman's taking the title. And he's going to destroy Byron Giant in the process. Uh, next up, we had Team Lucero's uh, original two members and Team Miller's original two members match up a tag match. It went very back and forth. Very good match. I mean, there was some good power spots. There was some good high flying spot. But eventually, the, the end, the kind of culminate, culminating moment came when Leone hit the ring. Uh, he nailed Montoya when the ref was distracted by AC Earl. Cats McCoy rolled up uh, Montoya after a dynasty cutter, got the pinfall. Team Miller gets a huge advantage. And then Leone announced he is the fourth member of Team Miller, which is huge because we're talking about a former NWF champion signing with the ECW team. And he will take on everyone if he has to get Montoya. And he will. He wants to destroy him. He wants to destroy him. He wants to break his head open and feast on his brains, basically. Uh, it's a side of Michael Leone we haven't seen. It's a very violent side. It's a very destructive side. Next, Jinzo came out. He told the, told the, he yeah, basically gave a little resume of himself. He's a lighter wrestler. He's thrilled fans with his ability to be high-flying. He's thrilled people with his ability to take risks. But then he digressed a little bit. Started talking about how he was also a very good technical wrestler. And that there was a title back in ECW called the Pure Title. That, quite frankly, was a title that you couldn't interfere. You couldn't get yourself disqualified. There were no weapons. There was no striking. It was just a wrestling match. He then called out Miz and... Jake Hansen asked, are you afraid to wrestle me straight up? And then they were trying to back out of it. They were trying to, they were trying to suggest that there was some conspiracy, but eventually, you know, the crowd and Jinzo got them, calling them cowards and everything, and finally Jake just snapped up a mic and said, you have a match. So now it regenerates pure championship Jinzo versus Jake Hansen. We'll see who comes out on top. Finally, in the main event, we had Phantom and Terminal Shock, and this match went back and forth. Neither man was willing to stay down, and they get mad props for it. I mean, they, they put everything on the line. They hit high-flying moves. They had submission holes. They had mat wrestling ability. Eventually, this was huge because uh, eventually Shock uh, basically Northern Lights suplexed uh, Phantom out of the ring, but Phantom caught the ropes and got a hurricane run on Shock. But Terminal Shark dragged them out to the outside anyways. They both hit down. They smacked their head on the concrete. Neither could recover by the same count. Double count out. Vince Lucero came out, though, and said, you know, this doesn't seem like an appropriate way to end this feud. And at Regenesis, you two are going to be fighting over a number one contender shot at the Vertical Limit Championship, the winner of the C.J. Carpenter-Austin Blake match. But it won't be just any match. It will be a ladder match, which has a lot of people in the crowd excited because I mean ladder match between two perennial great high flyers be a great match. Uh, anyways, concludes the review. Be back with the Regenesis preview uh, maybe later tonight. Well, later this morning. And be set.